Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Thursday, December 14th. Jaguars versus Ravens preview. It's time to get into it. Really appreciate y'all being here. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and you can check out GenJag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. It is time to preview Sunday night football. Ravens at Jaguars this Sunday, Duval County at the bank. Teal out should be a raucous environment. The Ravens enter this one as a three and a half point road favorite over your Jaguars. The Ravens have won seven of eight, something the Jaguars could say a few weeks ago. Uh, The best record in the AFC at 10 and three for the Baltimore Ravens tied for the best record in football. A couple teams over in the NFC, three teams, I should say at 10 and three, the Jaguars have lost two straight games, not really helping the Ravens though with those losses because those losses have come to AFC North foes teams in the Ravens division, the Bengals and the Browns letting the uh, AFC North get a little bit tighter Right there, right? Uh, Lamar Jackson for the Baltimore Ravens. Ever heard of him? One of the best quarterbacks on the planet. They've got OBJ. They've got Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman. The best receiving core that he has had as a professional quarterback for Lamar Jackson. Now the Ravens, they're usually one of the more injured teams in football. That's one of the storylines over the last several years. But right now they're doing fairly okay on the injury front. Obviously no Mark Andrews, which is big. I mean, this is one of the best tight ends in football. But they've got Isaiah Likely as well who can get you too. He's a big time athlete at the position. And the Jaguars, they struggle with these athletic tight ends. So I think you could be looking at an Isaiah Likely game in this one. Uh, J.K. Dobbins has been out for a while, but they've got runners. You know, Keaton Mitchell, a rookie out of East Carolina. This guy going undrafted was absolutely insane to me. I had a fourth round grade on this kid. So explosive, so fast, and you're seeing his ability to bust off these big plays for the Baltimore Ravens in this offense. Um, This group is very good in pass protection, very good on the ground. If the Jaguars defense plays the way they've been playing the last two weeks, The Ravens are going to drop 40 on them, maybe more. I mean, straight up. This Ravens offense is dangerous. They are well coached. Obviously, they brought in the new offensive coordinator this year who is doing a very good job, offensive coordinator from the University of Georgia, uh, comes in, kind of changes things up. They had been a little bit archaic with their passing game. No longer doing a really good job on that side of the ball. On the other side, the Jaguars, they're hopeful to get Walker Little back. Um, They're hopeful to get Ezra Cleveland back on the offensive line, uh, but they have a big test with this offensive line and pass protection and, of course, on the ground. The Jaguars' rushing attack has been abysmal when you talk about running in between the tackles. Now, you get outside and you do some good things, but the Jaguars have been unwilling to do that consistently for some reason. But looking at the Ravens' defensive front, Justin Matabuike on the interior, Jadavion Clowney, who the Jaguars should have signed, he was in this building, right? They didn't sign him. Kyle Van Noy, who the Jaguars could have signed. You know, both of these guys for next to nothing. You've got Travis Jones. You've got Jason Owe. Adafe Owe, I should say. I love this group up front. I think that they are really talented. They're really well coached. And they fit their defensive system. At linebacker, Roquan Smith. This is exactly the type of guy that screams Baltimore Ravens. And they were able to land him last year in a trade with the Chicago Bears. You know, Getting him in this defense, I think, has propelled them to where they are now. Uh, getting this defense in check from a uh, from an operational standpoint, and then also his ability to execute down in and down out. He's got Patrick Patrick Queen playing much better next to him. They've got Arthur Mollette, another guy the Jaguars showed interest in at nickel. And obviously, the Jaguars, when they have Trey Herndon healthy, they feel pretty good about where they're at at nickel. But he has not been healthy the last week or so, uh, most of the last two games with the concussion protocol. They're hopeful that they can get him back. But Arthur Mollett was a guy that they were looking at this offseason. He's having his best season as a pro with the Ravens. Uh, They've still got Marlon Humphrey on the outside. Marcus Williams and Kyle Hamilton at safety, right? This is a loaded group on the defensive side of the ball. And uh, so the Jaguars, they've got their work cut out for them on both sides. Obviously, uh, from what we have seen over the last you know, 10 days. I just don't know that the Jaguars have what it takes to beat them. I don't think that they match up super well with them. Uh, They'll have to flip the offensive game plan on its head, in my opinion, to be able to go out and really put up points against the Baltimore Ravens. They will need to get creative with Travis Etienne, get him the ball in space, stop mashing your head up against the wall with these interior runs. I mean, they are not working. The way they are designed with no misdirection, just, you know, we're going to try to hit the B gap. It's not working. 
It is not working at all because you have no push. And Travis Etienne, he's just a lot better when he's outside of the tackles in space. There's no doubt about it. Um, the Jaguars, I think they're going to have to attack the middle of the field, attack the linebackers. Guess what the Jaguars don't do? They do not attack the middle of the field. Even though Evan Ingram leads them in targets, you would think the tight end would be you know, in the middle of the field somewhat. Not a whole lot. They're using him getting out towards the boundary a lot more than anything else. So the Jaguars, in my opinion, they're going to have to do some different things in order to put up points in this game. You know, some of the um, issues for the Ravens' defense that you have seen at times this year, uh, their inability to stop the run at times, but... Again, I don't think that's going to matter unless you get outside with Travis Etienne. Um, I, I think that Patrick Queen can be a liability in coverage in certain situations. Can you take advantage of that? History throughout this season probably says no. Uh, the Ravens run a lot of varied coverages, but they will get you in plenty of man looks. So can you take advantage of man coverage? I mean, the Jaguars seemingly have the guys to be able to do that, but it hasn't been pretty for the most part this year. The Jags have been incredibly predictable for the most part in 2023. I think they had a little bit of a run, you know, in October and, and November where the offense started looking more creative. They were getting um, different looks for Calvin Ridley to get the football. They were obviously feeding different guys in different ways, but I think that's kind of gone by the wayside the last couple weeks. I'm not sure why. Uh, perhaps because they just feel that they can't operate without Christian Kirk. I don't know. Whatever it is, they've got to get it figured out, got to get creative, got to lock in and prepare as well throughout the week. Doug Peterson's mentioned that, that the Jaguars, you know, the same mistakes that are happening in practice are happening on game day. So you've got to have a better week of practice and preparation leading up to this football game if you want to win it. Got to cut out the pre-snap penalties, cut out the drops, cut out the mental mistakes on both sides of the ball. And on defense, they need a hard reset. The coverage busts. I mean, this defense has been broken the last few weeks. Uh, I think that they have an opportunity to get back to where they need to be. I do think Mike Caldwell has been a de good defensive coordinator for the most part this year. I do think this defensive scheme matches up with the talent, but you've had some injuries in the secondary. You've had some injuries at different places. Um, this defense needs a hard, re hard reset. The Jaguars are going to have to make more plays. They're going to have to play more like the team that you saw again in October and November, not the crap you've seen the last two weeks. If they play the way they played – against the Browns and against the Bengals, they are going to get blown out. There's no doubt about that in my mind. The Jaguars at home are 2-4. and four. They're 2-4 and four in Jacksonville. Unbelievable. I mean, they've made excuses as to why that is with the defensive performances, but the time for excuses is gone, right? There's no more excuses. You have to play better down the stretch or you're not going to make the playoffs. You're just not. And if you do, if you backdoor in, you're not going to win a football game playing the way you're playing. Now, this is not a must win for the Jaguars, in my opinion, in any stretch. It's just not. The Jaguars probably only need to win two more games to win the division. And, and then you host a home wild card game. You see what happens, right? But you've got to play better this week because even if you don't win this football game, you've got to have a little bit more momentum, a little bit more confidence in what you're doing going into the final three games where you're probably going to need to win at least two of those to win your division. And you should be favored, probably, in all three of those games, right? You're going to be playing at Tampa. You're going to be playing uh, versus Carolina and then at Tennessee. But you've got to play better this week, and you've got to play better down the stretch. I think the Jaguars will play better this week, but they have some injuries still going on in the secondary. Obviously, no Christian Kirk does hurt in a big way. Their most targeted receiver over the last couple years. Um, the run blocking still hurts. Injuries in the secondary hurt. It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tough one. I think the Jaguars will play better. I think they will play more sound on both sides of the ball. But will it be enough? We'll talk about it the rest of the week. We'll have bold predictions and keys to victory later in the week. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. Follow me on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo. You can follow Generation Jaguar at Generation Jag. Y'all have a good one.